This is Yvette Carnell from uh, Your Black World and BreakingBrown.com. And I just wanted to uh, bring Pascal Robert in, uh, writer Pascal Robert in, about something I'm sure you all know about because it was all the buzz last week. And Michael Eric Dyson wrote his 10,000-word soliloquy about uh, Dr. Cornell West. And then he came back. He has another. He has a part two. And so he wrote that. And so I just wanted to kind of, kind of, kind of break this down uh, with Pascal Robert in terms of what Michael Eric Dyson is up to. So in, in terms of in terms of my initial thinking when I read it, I was thinking that Dyson was trying to like I was thinking he was trying to rewrite history, right? Because Dyson's been on the wrong side of everything this entire time. He's been an Obama loyalist apologist. So I mean. Is that what you see, or is there something more sinister here? You asked, well, you said, thank you for having me on. Uh, well, the thing is interesting to, for me about this whole thing is that we're looking at, like, the Biggie and Tupac black public intellectual, <laughs> you know, back and forth of the, 20, of the new millennium. It's like, you know, these guys are battle rapping with space in the black public intellectual uh, realm here because of two of them. What I read about, about uh, from Dyson's piece is that this is this is more personal than political, and when I say this is more personal than political, the one thing that I take issue with what uh, Professor Dyson is doing is that he is using Cornell West's political uh, problems with the Obama administration as uh, what I consider an illegitimate backdrop to address what he thinks is the impropriety of the personal tone that Cornell West has taken with him and how he's spoken about him. So before we do that, the question that needs to be asked is that, is there a problem with Cornell West criticizing the Obama administration? Is that enterprise in itself questionable? And for me, when I, when I look at this whole uh, Cornell West, Michael Eric Dyson de to debate, I, I look at this from, in, from within the tradition of black public intellectuals or black intellectuals or black scholars. We have a long history of black scholars having problems with each other, or black intellectuals. Everyone knows about Du Bois and Marcus Garvey. People know about black leaders like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. People know about Du Bois and Booker T. Washington. However, the thing I think that differs with those positions is that at the core of those arguments were substantive concepts about what was the direction of leadership or the future of the black community. What distinguishes this whole diatribe between the two of them, in my opinion, is that the opinion of, about Obama's presidency is secondary to the personal rhetoric that they're using to refer to each other. In other words, Dyson, he actually concedes that West has a right to critique Obama, and even though he might disagree with the tone. He concedes that. He, the only thing that he has a problem with is having his name being personally used in a condescending, condescending or derogatory way. He doesn't like the vituperative language. But but here's the problem. But here's the problem, right? Like, he's like, I don't like the language that, that the Obama administration, and he's using, he said vicious. Didn't he use the word vicious like three or four times? It's vicious, yeah. vicious, vicious language. Well, here's the thing. Like, what is more vicious? Drone strikes? What is more vicious? You know, uh, occupation? What is more vicious? The outsourcing of jobs? What is more vicious? It's like the, the okay, even if you agree, and I've criticized, you know, some of, some of uh, Dr. Cornell West's rhetoric because I think it takes away from the argument. So I criticize it just in terms of strategy, not, nothing big, but, you know, in, in its effectiveness. But the question is, like, why does this mean more to you than what Obama is doing? Like, why does this mean more to you than the plight of, of black and brown people, not just here, but internationally? Why are you so going on that? And it's just like, I mean, in that, in that, if you read the second Michael Eric Dyson piece, he, he even goes so far as to say, you know, I have also often criticized Obama. What is your definition of often, Mr. Dyson? You are a loyalist. This is where I got to take issue with uh, Mr. Dyson is that he criticizes Obama in areas that did not put him in risk of support with the black community. In other words, he will criticize Obama in things that black people publicly will criticize Obama about. And this is where it comes to an issue. In other words, what, uh, questioning Obama's response to Trayvon Martin, or not Trayvon Martin, but to to the to the rash of kill, police brutality and killings that we've had, so on, so on. In other words, I what to me is important in judging these two men as so-called black public intellectuals 
for me, and this is because of the tradition that I respect, which one of them is really upholding the black radical intellectual, intellectual tradition? And when I say, what is the black radical intellectual tradition? Well, more, many black, many of our, our, our viewers may not know that there is an intellectual tradition going back to before the boys. I would say you can even go back to the Haitian Revolution, the boys, Paul Robeson, the Black Panthers. You can go to George, George, George Jackson, Soledad Brothers. There is, going back to the 19th century, there have been black thinkers and speakers and writers who have challenged the function of American enterprise imperialism. They have challenged American capitalism, how it functions, functions domestically and abroad. And they have challenged American racism domestically and abroad. And for me, in judging these two individuals, the question I ask is, which one of these two men are more closely upholding the black radical intellectual tradition. And to me, why that's important is because the black radical tradition is always about telling the truth, no matter how popular or unpopular it is. Yeah. People forget, for example, I saw Dyson in his, in his interview with Mark Lamont Hill on Huff Post Live said, well, Dyson is, alien, well, excuse me, uh, Cornel West is alien, alienating himself from all his supporters. You gotta have somebody who's on your label at some point. Are we going to remember how alienated Du Bois was from the whole community when he stood by the Russians in, in you know, uh, during the during the height of mm. um, the World War II area? Yeah. How Paul Robeson was shut out, was shunned. How yeah. Jackie Robinson basically stabbed him in the back for supporting communism. So let's not act that. Let's not act like in the history of the Black radical tradition, we do not have black thinkers who have been alienated by other black people because of their position. And 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 you and let me let me just say that goes that that point that you just made goes to principle, right? How principle can you be? Can you stand by your principles even when even when the black community turns against you? And I think yes. that I, I think that goes to the key of Dyson's of why Dyson turned out to be an Obama loyalist though. You remember when Dyson said Obama's not Obama's not Obama's not um Mose, oh, he's he's Pharaoh. You remember when Dyson made that thing when he made that speech? Well, the point is he got a lot of pushback because of that. He got a lot of pushback, and I think for me, I wonder if he saw if he saw if he read the tea leaves and he says, "Do if, if I do this, you know, the black community is going to turn against me." And so what I'm going to do now is 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 just position myself to give like these very mild, you know, uh, worthless critiques of Obama, which really don't matter. You know, and then so I can still be instead with the black community. And then you come up in the rear and you say and you say, hey, I've always been critical of Obama. I told Obama to use his bully pulpit as if that's some kind of real criticism. Well, this is interesting. If you look at Max Blumenthal, who is a writer who, you know, writes quite often mm -hmm. about the Israeli-Palestinian crisis, wrote an article in Alternate, that, in Alternate that made a very interesting point. He said after Dyson made that statement where he was so charged and he called Obama, Obama Pharaoh and realizing that the tea leaves that it didn't sit well with the black community, it is immediately after that that you see 19 visits by Michael Eric Dyson to the White House. To the, to the, to the White House. Literally, 19 visits and to, to the White House, and that's when all of a sudden he becomes a spokesman on MSNBC. That's when, I mean, I mean, let's be, you know, let's be fair. I don't have a problem with Michael Eric Dyson being an Obama supporter. I mean, my politics have a problem in that I am not an Obama supporter. I'm an open critic of the Obama administration. But I do not question the right of Michael Eric Dyson being an Obama supporter. That is his political right. That is fine. But do not act as if Cornell West, who, in my opinion, based on the example I use, is in line with the tradition of the black radical intellectual tradition, saying that I'm calling out empire regardless of whose face is at the helm. Yeah. If we agree with that, then it, it then I don't think it's unfair for Cornell West to question the motivation of Michael Eric Dyson, who I, I believe from reading some of Dyson's work and seeing his rhetoric, I believe that Michael Eric Dyson also views himself in line with the black radical tradition. He is, he, I'm sure he would consider himself a Du Boisian to some extent, and that he is also an inheritor of that tradition. I think for the sake of them both being, you know, in the realm of Christianity, they like to turn the black prophetic tradition, which I think, quite frankly, using black prophetic tradition, and I'm not to insult these gentlemen, I think it's a cowardly way of using the black radical tradition and putting a Christian spin on it. 
Yeah. In other words, you don't yeah. want to say that you are inherited of the black radical tradition, so you just call it the black prophetic tradition because it's oh, it, it's it's not it's not as offensive to to these the mainstream status quo political realm where you say I'm part of the black prophetic tradition. But Martin Luther King Jr. at the best of his prophetic tradition was a radical critique of the American imperial enterprise. You know, which I would argue that Martin Luther King Jr. in the last of his life was much more in line with the black radical tradition than many of our contemporary black thinkers. As a matter of fact, black, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was one of the last one of the last articles he wrote in 1967 was the black power defined. A lot of people don't know that Black Martin Luther King actually had an opinion on black power, and he was not averse to the concept of black power. So what I'm saying is that to further on your point is that if Dyson wants to be an Obama supporter and still criticize the president, that's fine, but you're still an Obama supporter. The function of M the MSNBC, I don't think it's questionable to anyone, is to act as the media arm of the Oval Office in American society. And and, and it was and it wasn't until after Dyson started 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 meeting with okay, he started meeting with Obama. These 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 how many were there? Like nineteen? How many meetings were there? He started meeting with Obama. And all of a sudden, dude is on MSNBC. Like all of a sudden, like not just every once in a while, what used to be like he's sitting in for Ed at the Ed show, he's doing all this stuff. So I think for me, it's like, okay, I see, and I see a lot of this happening right now in terms of black people who have been, or, or black pundits or black intellectuals or black journalists too, who have been on the Obama bandwagon, who have decided, okay, this, this ship is sinking. So I have to position myself as someone who was at least somewhat critical of this administration in terms of how I move forward. So, you know, that's that's kind of how I see this framing, because like I said, I said it a second ago, he said, I, I, I have criticized Obama often. That's not well, true. Yeah. Like, that's you've been overwhelming me on his side. If, if, if we're going to be honest about how many times you've criticized o Obama, let's ask how many times have you defended Obama and what have you defended him for? And just and the question needs to be asked is, why do you feel a need to defend the head of empire, whether it's against a Republican attack or anyone, when in the, in the history of the black radical tradition, the position is that Obama is the president of the United States. He's the head of the American imperial mechanism. Why do we need to defend him at all? Uh, is, isn't our position as intellectuals, as social critics, as thinkers, to look at the position of presidency? Aren't we supposed to look at power and put it under the microscope and challenge power? Why do we even ever have to worry about being spokespeople for power, whether the power is black, white, or otherwise? And this is where I think the whole ex the whole enterprise that Professor Dyson is engaging in is questionable. In other words, why do you ever feel that you have to defend Obama? Well, he's a brother. Well, that, I think that that is where I differ with many of of uh, our brothers and sisters who are in the camp of defending Obama. Is that I think that this allegiance that they have to Obama. They will disagree. They will say, well, no, it's not because he's black. It's because they understand that they don't want to risk their support in the black community and come out and criticize a president who is very popular, whose racial narrative has intoxicated large numbers of the black community, and they don't want to risk the loss of perhaps their, uh, their speaker fees that Cornell West is taking by saying, no, I'm going to criticize him because he is the face of empire, regardless of whether or not he's black or not. Because when Bush was engaging in militaristic activity across across the globe, no one in the black community who was from that politically that particular political bent had a problem doing so. Well, hold yeah, on, was... hold on, and hold on. You remember, I, re I I came across a clip the other day where Michael Eric Dyson was on Democracy Now, and he called the Bush administration vicious fascists for what they were doing around the globe and for imperialism. And Obama has basically doubled down on that. And you've never called Obama a vicious fascist. So the only difference between these two men or these two administrations is, for the most part, skin color. So how can you call yourself? I, so, so I think that's that's the problem. You you the, the problem is right now we're coming across the fact that you're unprincipled. That's really the problem because you hold the Bush accountable or you, you hold the Bush administration accountable, but nothing for this administration. And, and you mentioned the Blumenthal piece, the, the the killer line in the Blumenthal piece for me was when he said uh, Michael Eric Dyson had mentioned. Nas more than the NSA, you know. So he is focusing on things that don't matter to what we talk about all the time—the political economy of black where, people. Where did Michael Eric 
Sessions' critique of the fact that Barack Obama has sent American troops into 35 African countries, that he's militarized the continent of Africa more than any American president in modern history, including George W. Bush. Where's your critique about that? Where is where is Sessions' critique about the fact that Obama's neoliberal education policy race to the top is closing more public schools across the country than at any other time in my lifetime at all? Where's his critique? Where is Michael Eric Dyson critiquing Barack Obama in those areas that would cause him to be unpopular with his black constituency based on principle like Cornell West is doing? They're, they're, not, they're, they're not there. But remember, you mentioned speaking fees early. Remember, people forget that, that public intellectuals get speaking fees when they go. I remember when they go out to speak. I remember, this has probably been about, oh, it's probably been about three or four years ago. I remember, you remember Tavis Smiley, and I'm not saying Tavis Smiley isn't, it doesn't come with his own set of issues and problems or whatever, but just in terms of his critique of Obama, I remember Tavis Smiley was going to this MLK thing, and he was going to do a speech, and his speaking fee was like $30,000, and I remember the people raised a, 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 a mess, like they, 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 they protested and said, this, Tavis Smiley hasn't been on the, in favor of the president, blah, 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 we don't want him to come to speak here for this King Day stuff, we don't want him to do that, and his money was gone. So I think people have to take everything into account because there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of inside baseball going on here. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of reasons monetary and otherwise why Dyson just like, no, I'm not going to take that hit. No, let's make this clear. I mean, these people, listen, you know, the, the black public intellectual hustle is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars speech and so on and so forth. You know, that money is good money. You know what I'm saying? That, you, get like, you, get, you get buy a lot of nice suits with that money. Oh, yeah. So the fact that, you know, you're going to lose that money because you were taking a principal stance against you know, the, the presidency, that, that the question needs to be asked. And this goes back to the question I repeated earlier. Who is truly in line with the black radical intellectual tradition? Who is acting more like in the tradition of Du Bois and Paul Robeson in this debate? Is it Michael Eric Dyson or is it Cornell West? Who is sacrificing whatever support he has, even in his, in his constituent community, to make principal critiques of the president, even if they may be based on initial personal slights? Which I don't think this is about Cornell West not getting tickets. Yeah, that's to right. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the first inauguration anymore. Yeah. I think we're beyond that. I think that it's even about Cornell West realizing that the main function of the Obama presidency. Exactly. Forth. You're exactly right. No, I think you're exactly right. You're exactly right in terms of the neoliberal project, which is privatization. We say this all the time when we have these programs, you and I, is that neoliberalism is a fancy word for privatization, that private corporations are taking over the function of your government. And if you look at Obama's race to the top, you look at his, even his health care program, we have now private insurance companies that are taking over. We are now in the age of neoliberalism. And as Cornel West is an antagonist or an opponent, an opponent to neoliberalism, I think that he realizes he has made an intellectual judgment that the Obama administration, because of the salient and impressive narrative of his racial background and his black wife and playing basketball, is a very, very, very effective anesthesia to the consciousness of the black community in the face of being the neoliberal face of empire has ramped up his critique and made very, very, very blunt and direct statements. So I would argue that maybe the reason why he's using that kind of language is that he realizes that the dangers of this the danger of this racial first black president narrative has more power to put a community he cares about, which is the black community, asleep instead of waking up and saying, well listen. Don't you have a problem with the fact that this president is closing more of the historically black colleges and universities than any even Republicans? Why aren't you challenging that? Don't you have a problem with the fact that he has closed every office of the minority um, uh, small business development association? Why aren't you challenging that? Don't you have a problem with the fact that black unemployment has gone mostly unabated in this presidency? Why aren't you challenging it? Don't you have a problem that Detroit has been gutted under this president, under the first black president? Don't you have a problem that black men are being shot in the back, black women are being killed, that 1.5 black men, according to a recent New York Times article, have disappeared, and we have a first black president, and you're basically being gunned down in the street? What exactly, what have been the fruits that have come to your 96% of this black president to your community? Why aren't you asking what this president is doing to protect your well-being? Don't you have a problem with the fact that both the Voting Rights Act and now the Fair Housing Act are about to be gutted under the first black president? 
Why aren't you challenging the way the system, whether it's Obama's fault or not, is attacking you in a community instead of sit, sitting around clapping your hands and saying, yes, we can, we have arrived. And I think that, you know, Cornel West is a thinking man. I think he realizes that. I think maybe even Dyson realizes that, but I think Dyson, in my opinion, not to diss the brother, has taken the safe choice because he does not want to put his bona fides in the black community at risk and said, I can't rile the folk up and make them challenge the man that they love. While Cornel West, in what I consider to be the best of the black radical tradition, has said, listen, I, I'm not going to stand for this. I'm going to be the boys in, in the 40s when he was, he was castigated by the black community for being a communist. I'll be Paul Rosen and have Jackie Robinson stab me in the back when he was castigated for ch challenging American capitalism. I'll be that guy. I don't have a problem. I'm going to stand on principle. While Dyson is having 19 meetings with the president. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I think... Thank you, Pascal. I think I, I think that's a perfect I think that's a perfect perfect end point for this conversation right there. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you for that. I think we'll do this again. I, th I don't think this conversation is over. So I think we'll do this again. I want to thank everybody uh, for coming to Breaking Brown, for coming to Your Black World, and um, reach out to us because we want to have this conversation. Black agenda, black agenda report. Yes, Black Agenda Report, who has been doing this for, who has been, I mean, in terms of, even when you look at the newspapers, in terms of Black radical tradition and speaking truth to power, Black Agenda Report, we got to get him a shout out. So I want to thank, uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Robert, and we will do this sometime in the future, I'm sure.